Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Beloved, this is Cornerstone Deliverance Church. Amen. We bless God for the life, amen, the Christian life of each and every one of you that are on the line on tonight. Praise God. As we are gathered in the name of Jesus, and that's Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Praise God. Amen. Him that we know to be the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Praise God. We just bless the Lord, amen, for this opportunity. Amen, that we could come together and learn of him, that we may know him, praise God. Amen, hallelujah. And so we are located at 323 Post Avenue in Westbury, New York, and our website is www.cornerstonedeliverancechurch.com. Amen, praise God. We invite you to peruse the website and even to download our church app from your, um, to any mobile device or tablet that you may have from your Google Play Store or Apple Store. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, beloved, this is our Wednesday night Bible study that by the grace of God and as God allow, we have this Bible study on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Amen. And that number for you to dial in is 605-313-5111, access code 151647-POUND. Praise God. Before we get started in Bible study tonight, I'm going to ask that Sister Latasha um, open us up in prayer on tonight. Praise God. I release the line to you, Sister Latasha. Amen. I just wanted to say God bless everyone on the phone line tonight. Bless I'm not going to be able to stay long because I'm actually at work. So mm-hmm. I'm just going to open us up in prayer. So, Father God, we lift you up on today. Oh, Father God, we thank you, oh God, for this opportunity, oh God. Oh, Father God, we thank, we ask you on, I ask you on today to cover the apostle and each person that's calling in or that might come in on the phone line on today. Mm -hmm. Father God, we're so grateful and honored to be able to come and gather in your name. Oh, Father God, we thank you, oh God, that you're watching over us and keeping us, oh God. Oh, Father God, we thank you for the wisdom that's going to come forth on today. And, Father, we thank you and we bless your name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Praise God. And so, beloved, on tonight, we thank God for that opening prayer. Amen. And that's what we want. We want to hear from God. We want want the scriptures to be made life for us. We want the wisdom of God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Look like it got a little dark in here. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved, tonight we are skipping some lessons. Amen. We did the Godhead 1. We should have been going into Godhead 2, but we're not going to do Godhead 2 um, right now because I was led by the Holy Spirit, amen, to do the lesson on prayer, privilege, and power. Prayer, privilege, and power. Prayer is a privilege, and it is the power of God. Amen. Praise God. Prayer is a weapon of warfare for those of us whose faith is in the Christ. It is truly a weapon of warfare. Amen. Prayer is what we call our dialogue with God. Amen. The language in which we speak to God is called prayer. Praise God. And we can pray to God in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Or we can pray to God with an understanding. Amen. And we're going to learn about these things tonight. Praise God. For I did hear the word of God say, and I have said this many times, and we shifted. I heard the spirit of the Lord say, make disciples. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so the only way that we can make disciples is that we must teach you all the things that Christ has taught us. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And you too, God will use to teach someone else. Even if it's not in a group, it may be one-on-one, praise God. Amen. But whatever it is, the tools that the Holy Spirit has given unto you, amen, you need to use them and use them wisely. Amen. And so tonight's lesson is prayer, privilege, and power. Amen. Amen. The older church used to say, amen, no prayer, no power. Amen. Little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power, praise God, amen? And so that meant that, amen, if you did not have dialogue or 
that type of relationship with God, amen, through prayer, amen, hallelujah. You didn't have no power, amen, praise God, because power and prayer goes hand in hand, amen. And so, beloved, I want to read to you Psalm um, verse chapter, Psalm chapter 65, verse 2, and it says, O thou that hearest, pray. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Amen. And Psalms 145 and 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. Amen. And then James 4, 8 says, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Hebrews 4.16 says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. 1 Timothy 2.8 says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands, without wrath and doubting. Amen? And so one of the ways, where should we pray? We need to pray everywhere. Amen? Praise Amen. God. And hallelujah. And we ought to pray how? By lifting up holy hands yes. without wrath or doubting. Amen? So we want to pray without doubting. Amen? Praise Amen. God. And sometimes it's not so easy to pray without wrath. Amen? Because sometimes the people that you are praying for have come up against you. Amen? Praise God. Amen. Sometimes these people are your enemies. Praise Amen. God. But we have to learn how to pray with a sincere heart. Amen? And even pray for their salvation their sanctification, and their holiness. Amen? Prayer is something that those of us that believe in Christ, this is something that we do. Amen? Wow. Praise God. Prayer is what we do. Amen? Amen. 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 So in this lesson, we're going to teach you, amen, what the Bible says about prayer. Jesus is our greatest example of prayer. And then there's other characters, amen, hallelujah, holy men of old, amen, that use this tool of prayer, this privilege, amen, to exercise the power of God, amen. Jude one twenty says, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And so when we pray in the Holy Ghost, we build ourselves up, praise God, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Sometimes, amen, I like to get into a fellowship with God, and when the Holy Spirit quickened me, I would stay there praying in the Holy Ghost as long as he would allow. Why? Because that builds me up. Amen. This is what that scripture is saying. When I want the enemy off my back, amen, I don't pray with an understanding. I pray in the Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because I want the enemy to let me go. Amen. And you will find that in church, amen, sometimes they will tell you if there is no interpreter, amen, and you are praying in your prayer le- or you are praying in tongues and there's no interpreter, amen, that it does not edify anyone but you, amen. And so praying in the Holy Ghost edifies you. Praise God, amen. And so First Peter 4, 7 says, but the end of all things is at hand, be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Amen? And so, beloved, I believe that this lesson on prayer is very important, praise God. Amen? We need to hear what, what the Holy Spirit has revealed through Scripture concerning prayer. So we're looking at prayer, the vocation of the believer. Amen? That vo- word vocation means job. Praise God. Amen. God didn't tell us, please pray. When he told us to pray in the word, those are commands. Amen. He's telling you that you ought to pray. Amen. And so the scripture text on the right show that the word of God repeatedly commands us to seek the Lord in prayer. The Old and New Testaments are filled with examples of prayer and calls to prayer. Amen. And so 1 Chronicles 16 and 11 says, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Amen. And so we seek God in prayer. And we are not supposed to do it just one time or 
I prayed last week or I prayed earlier today. The word of God says, do it continually. Amen. Isaiah 55 and 6 says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Amen. Ephesians 6, 18 says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen. And so you see, amen, we are to pray always, praise God. Amen. The Bible says acknowledge God in all of our ways that he may direct our paths. When we acknowledge him, that's called prayer. Amen. Our communication to God is called prayer. Amen. Prayer is the most important Christian discipline that a believer can learn. For without prayer, spiritual survival is impossible. Prayer is like spiritual breath. We pray or we die. Amen, beloved, amen. This is why, amen, I don't mind praying for the saints because the Bible says let the, let the saints come to the elders and they shall pray for you and you shall be healed and different things like that. But you also have to learn how to pray for yourself, praise God. Amen, hallelujah. Amen. So I will ask you at time, have you sought God for yourself? Amen. This prayer is important. Recently, I just had a surgical procedure. Amen. Hallelujah. And my, it, 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 had, it had backed up with fluid and blood. So it was very, very swollen. Amen. And Monday night, I was in pain and I was supposed to lead prayer. And I did not think that I had the grace to. Amen. But I asked God to just give me the grace you know, that because um, we have been missing some services, that I can lead prayer. That prayer was not recorded, amen, but in that prayer, all I could do is invoke the name of Jesus, the power and authority that comes with that name, every, every, every gift and, and, and every privilege that comes through by way of the cross of Christ, amen, by invoking that name, the move of the Spirit. And I tell you, my God, hallelujah, Jesus, my... my um. My stitch opened up, praise God, and where it was backed up, it began to drain. Oh, I began to to bless the Lord, amen? I'm telling you, when we pray, praise God, things happen, things change. When we pray, it moves the hand of God on our behalf. When we pray according to the way Scripture tells us to pray, when we pray and do not pray amiss, when we pray the mind and the plan of God for us, amen? Amen. And so, beloved, it is important to pray. When I couldn't do nothing else, I was praying, praise God. And while amen. this thing was draining, amen, hallelujah, it was hard for me, praise God. And, I, and, and it was draining, and, 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 and I was weak, praise God, amen, and I had to pray some more. I had to call on the name of Jesus, amen. Lord, deliver me, praise amen. God, amen. And so amen. one prayer led to more prayer, praise God, amen. And so, beloved, I just want to encourage you, amen, to pray. Amen? It's real. Amen. It is real, praise God. Prayer is the most important, prayer is the most important Christian discipline that a believer can learn. Amen? If we learn to develop a steady, consistent prayer life in the beginning of our Christian walk, we will have less difficulty in following God and our spiritual progress will be tremendously, and our spiritual progress will be tremendously improved. Amen? Amen. And so prayer activates the strength and power that we need to overcome every obstacle. Prayer activates the strength and power that we need to overcome every obstacle. Amen? I'm sorry, beloved. I'm watching because they, these people are on the golf course tonight, and I'm trying to figure out why they're on the golf course so late. But let me stop being nosy and focus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you focus me in your yes. word and in my study in the name of Jesus. I bind every distraction that may come yes. in the name of Jesus by the blood of God. I cancel the assignment of the enemy, everything that is causing my mind to race 
Father, I pray that you put my mind at rest in Jesus' name. I give you glory. I give you praise and honor for it even now in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so, beloved, I had to pray for myself because I realized that there was a distraction. Amen. So if we learn to develop a steady, consistent prayer life in the, be- in the beginning of our Christian walk, we'll have less difficulty in following God and our spiritual progress will be tremendously improved. Amen? Prayer activates the strength and power that we need to overcome every obstacle and difficulty of life. Prayer together with fasting and the word of God will bring us victory over every problem. Amen? And so, beloved, I want to encourage you concerning these things, that we can have victory over every problem. Amen? Why? Because we pray. Because we pray. Amen? And so let us get aligned with God's word. Amen? When it comes down to, when it comes down to praying. Amen? Praise God. And you, you really don't want to miss this lesson because this lesson is going to bless you. It's going to increase your faith your faith, this, this lesson is coming with a provision to empower you. Praise God. Amen. Prayer, the great spiritual weapon. Amen. So some people may not look as, as prayer as a weapon. Prayer is a privilege, but it's also part of our weapons of warfare. Amen. For the armor of God is listed in Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 14 through 17. However, immediately following the list of our spiritual armor, prayer is emphasized as the activating weapon that makes the rest of the arsenal effective. Amen? And so, beloved, I want you to turn with me with this to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 14 through 18, and I'm going to ask that somebody read that. Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 14 through 18, praise God. Amen. And we're going to see here prayer as a great spiritual weapon. Amen. Praise God. When you get it, just say amen. 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 Brother Golden, would you read it? Okay, you said Ephesians chapter six and what 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 are verses verse? fourteen through eight verses fourteen through eighteen. Okay, I have it. Thank you. Okay. And good, and good evening to you. Good evening, man to God. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna start reading. Uh verse fourteen, Ephesians, Ephesians six, verses fourteen through eighteen. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication of the spirit and watching them, too, with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen. Praise God. And the word of God is blessed. And so, <laughs> beloved, in Ephesians is listing, is telling us, first of all, when we first begin to read in Ephesians, amen, Ephesians talks a lot about our relationship in marriage, our relationship with our neighbors, our relationship with our children, for family, you know, it talks about all kinds of relationships and how we ought to, how our character ought to be in those relationships. And then when you get further down to Ephesians where it's speaking of the armor of God, the Bible tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So now God tells us how our character should be in relationship, but he's also telling you that there is something else that is working that is invisible. That you're not, when you, when you begin to have issues in relationship, that you're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but you wrestling against what? Spiritual wickedness. Amen. You listen, you, you, you wrestle against principalities. Amen. You wrestling against demonic spirits. Praise God. Amen. Because Satan is a motivator. And so we have to be very careful not to give our body or our voice box over to the enemy. Amen. Amen. Praise God and let him use us. Amen. And so this right here says, stand therefore 
having your loins girt about with truth. Amen. And so do anybody know in the word of God what is truth? We know that the word is truth. Amen. But Jesus also says that I am the way, I am the truth. Amen. And so we have to keep our loins girded with Jesus, girded with Jesus who is the living word. Amen. Listen, the word of God is a great arsenal. Amen. And then it says, in having on the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. Our righteousness is the righteousness of Christ. It was imputed unto us. So Jesus is our righteousness. Amen. And so, beloved, we find out that every portion of the armor is Christ. It is just going to keep coming up Jesus. Amen. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith. And you know what I love about the shield of faith? I, 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 I love that little thing that we used to say when we was young, sticks and stones may hurt my bones, but your words will never hurt me. Amen? Will never harm Amen. me. Amen? We do All know right. that words can hurt. We do know that words, amen, hallelujah, especially if they're word curses, especially if they're, if they're things to, to be able to um, – that is set intentionally to hurt your feelings, amen, or to um, um, mess up your character, amen. Words can really hurt you, amen. Even if it's people telling you that they're supposed to love you, that you ain't going to be nothing, your daddy wasn't nothing, your mama was, you know, when you're hearing things like that, those things do hurt, praise God. When, when people are speaking things to you, amen, that are not edifying, Amen. When they're coming up against you with their words, amen, God showed me something in this. Sticks and stones may, may break our bones, but words will never hurt us. And the reason why is because we have a shield of faith, and that shield of faith is our faith in God's word. This is why it's very important for you to know the promises that God has made unto you. Why? Because when your faith is in what God has already said, and the enemy comes and says something contrary, or your husband or your wife says something contrary, or your neighbor says something contrary, or your co-worker says something contrary, or the judge or the doctor says something contrary, you get to pull up your shield of faith. You then get to deny that thing and say, my faith is in the word and the promise of God, and this is his mind toward me, his mind toward me, is that I prosper and be in good health, amen. So what is your shield of faith? Your shield of faith is that you, because your faith is in Christ, you can't put your faith in nothing else. Beloved, Amen. if you don't believe it, it can't work. Jesus. If you don't believe it, it can't work. And so when you pull up that shield of faith, how does it quench the fiery dawn of the enemy? This is not a metal um, piece of armor. Even though we see when a soldier, he got his metal shield, you don't have a metal shield. Your shield is what you believe. Where you put your faith at, amen? And sometimes you have to constantly fight the good fight of faith when these words are being spoken against you, amen? Praise God, amen. hallelujah. Sometimes I answer the phone or get into conversations and I say, man, it would have been better that I didn't answer this call at all because I would not be in the midst of this warfare, amen? I would not be in the midst of the warfare of trying to, Fight the good fight of faith, keeping my faith in Christ, that whatever it is that was just spoken against me does not work. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. And so, beloved, we want you to know, even though we see a soldier with all of this metal stuff, remember David fought Goliath with a slingshot and a rock because he knew that the armor was the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, our weapons of warfare is not carnal in nature, but mighty in God. Amen? Listen, you got to put on this whole armor. And when you put this armor on, what it is that you're putting on is what? You're putting on Christ. Amen? Praise God. Wherewith you shall um, be able to quench every fiery dart of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, Amen. That's the word again. The helmet of the salvation is the word that is protecting your mind, your head dome. The Bible says meditate on my word day and night, and I will keep you in what? Perfect peace. 
Amen. Praise God. The only way that we're going to have perfect peace is by what? The meditation of the word of God. Amen. And it says here, amen, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word again, amen, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Amen. So after you put on your full armor, amen, it says pray, right? It says pray where? Pray how? Always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, amen, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, amen. And so what I found that, what I found that I've been getting calls lately, amen, of people that are visiting churches. Some of them are, one of them is a church that I grew up with, and they always come back with a report. And I had to tell the person, listen, you're quite negative. You know what I'm saying? Why, why, why do you even go if you did not go there for the word? Why do you come back with this negative report of dissension and all of this foolishness? I told them you were busybody. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Leah, the, the Bible speaks about people like this. Yeah. Amen. And so, beloved, we have to be mindful because if we don't like something that is going on, we have already received the charge to do what? Pray. And prayer and supplication for what? For all saints. Amen. It may be a saint that you like. It may be a saint that it ain't that you don't like. Amen. Praise God. But pray for them. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. We Amen. can't control what people do, but the one thing that we can control is how we respond to what people do. Amen. Mm-hmm. Let our response be prayer. Amen. Praise God. And let us pray sincerely. Amen. According to how the word of God is instructing us to pray. Amen. Prayer Mm -hmm. is the supreme spiritual weapon in the arsenal of the believer. It is unlimited in its power. It can overcome and defeat any onslaught or attack. Amen. Let us turn to 2 Corinthians 10, 4. What does that say? 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. Amen. Listen. When, when we finish this, amen, I'm going to tell you something. Prayer is going to be what you do. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I, I know of the attacks that come upon me. Amen. And before I say something that I ought not to say, I choose amen. to pray. Praise. Amen. I choose to pray. Amen. Because I can say a whole lot of things. Amen. God says what we do with the members of our body and who we submit them up under, that is our master. Well, my master, Jesus Christ, the word of God, amen, the word that is God, told me to pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Everywhere, all the time. Amen. Praise God. And listen, you can't go before the throne of grace with no foolishness. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. So God is saying it's best that you talk to me than answer them. It's best that you talk to me. It's best that you talk to me. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. He's telling you, don't answer the fool. He said, talk to me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And it should continue with the casting down of imaginations. Amen. And so, beloved, I have to do that a lot. Amen. Amen. Praise God when I'm praying. And, and when I'm casting down imaginations, this ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. Amen. Because sometimes Amen. things can be spoken and you begin to imagine that thing. You got to cast down Amen. imagination. Amen. This thing ain't working in my heavens. You ain't going to work in my mind all night long. Amen. Sometimes people say things to you that is disheartening to your spirit. Amen. Amen. God has given you the privilege and the power in prayer to pray Amen. about it. Amen. Pray about it, beloved. Amen. Praise God. And the Bible, great people of God became great because they knew how to pray. The people who did mighty things for God, who had powerful ministries, and who lived holy lives were always mighty in prayer. Amen. So we know that prayer is not an option. Prayer is necessary. Amen. Amen. Prayer is a must. Amen. And so it says here, Elijah prayer brought victory over the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. Let us read 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 37 to 38. Elijah's prayer, amen, 
brought victory over the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, Carmel, right? And so he was out there by himself, praise Amen. God. Amen. And he was not afraid. And how many prophets not was it of Baal? Was it about 400 prophets of Baal? Oh, yeah. the devil is a lie. The devil is a liar. Oh, you coming out tonight. I'm going to kill you tonight. Amen, Jesus. The devil is a lie. I ain't got no time to be afraid tonight. Fight is coming out. I'm preaching Jesus and teaching. The devil I, uh-uh, no, no, the devil the is a liar. Every witchcraft blood. spirit come up out of here in the name of Jesus. I bind you in Jesus' name. My Praise my God. God. Amen. Amen. I got power over you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Boy, that was, that was a thick one, too. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. And I know it's God's creation. Amen. But it can't live in here. Live Praise God. Now. Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Try to sneak up on the, on the system. Oh, the devil is alive. <laughs> Praise <laughs> God. Hallelujah. The father of life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said he suffered a witch not to live. Praise God. Okay, come on. <laughs> hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. So what does 1 Kings 18, 37 to 38 say? 18, I have it if you need it. Okay, what does it say? So we can uh, hear what it says. First King 18, 37, 38. Hear me, O uh-huh. Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and thou, that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Hey, hallelujah. Listen, Elijah prayed. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. Did. And when he prayed, God I showed did. up. Praise God. He Amen. Out. He said, hear me, O Lord. Amen. Lord, Listen, he didn't Lord. say, don't do this for my glory. Do this for your glory that they know that you are God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, beloved. We have to know how to pray. When we pray, we're not praying that we be glorified, that we look good. We're praying that God be glorified. Hallelujah. When I wanted God to heal me, I said, Lord, do it for your glory. Amen. That I could tell of your goodness. Amen. All over this land. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I promise you I won't hold my peace, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not going to sit down on your goodness and your mercy. Amen. And your miracles. It won't be me, Jesus. Amen. And so Elijah prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Not that they know that he's a great prophet. Amen. But that they know that God is God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. And so Joshua prayer caused the sun to stand still. Amen. Beloved, we said that prayer is a privilege and it is power. Amen. So yeah. Joshua 10, verses Praise 12 through 14. God. Amen. Amen. Listen, beloved, there are different kingdom systems. The galactic yeah. kingdom, amen, is a kingdom system. Amen. It yeah. governs the sun, the moon, and all of that other stuff. Well, the sun was about to go down while Joshua was in battle. Amen. Yeah. And, and Joshua wanted to win this battle. Praise God. And Joshua looked up to the sun and he told the sun to stand still. In prayer, did Joshua have power over the galactic kingdom? Amen. And everything in the solar system, whatever was turning on its axis, ain't nothing running to nothing. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. God is a prayer answering God. He does it all the time. Amen. But we have to exercise the power that God has given us in prayer. What did he give us power? He told us, amen. He said, those "Those of you that believe, he said, go lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's prayer right there. Prayer, prayer, healing for the sick. He said, he said, Open the eyes of the blind. Heal the lame. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He said, cast out devils. Praise God. He gave Mm -hmm. us power. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I don't have to say, Lord, make this demon come Mm -hmm. out. He already gave me the authority. I'm going to look and I'm going to say, devil, you coming up out of there in the name of Jesus, Father, blood. Amen. You spirit of lust. You spirit of whatever you are. Fear. Amen. You coming up out of there in the name of Jesus. Why? Because we got authority. Joshua didn't say, God, stop the sun. He told, he looked up at the sun. He said, stand still. Did he not? Let, 
let us read what Joshua did. Joshua chapter 10. Beloved, you're going to know your authority. Amen? You get to tell the devil, I'm not going to beg and plead with you. I know my authority. You coming up and out of there. Amen? Praise God. You got to come up and out of there, praise God. Amen? What does he say, man, to God? Okay, Joshua 10th chapter, I have it. Uh, read, read Joshua chapter 10, verse 10 through 12. 12 to 14. 12 to 14. Yeah. Joshua 10, 12 through 14. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Okay. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon the enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And mm. there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. Hallelujah, Jesus. Beloved, you have to know that God is fighting for you. Praise God. Amen. Mm -hmm. When you pray, he shows up. When you pray, he delivers. Amen. When you pray. Amen. Praise Mm -hmm. God. It says here, Hannah's prayer resulted in the birth of Samuel the prophet. Let's read 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 27. Amen. We want you to see how those characters in the Bible pray that you too may know the authority that you have in prayer. Praise God. Amen. The authority and the power. It is a privilege. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. That's First Samuel. We go on to chapter 1, and we go on to verse 27. Amen. We know about Hannah. Hannah was married to the man who had another wife, Panana, and Panana taunted her because Hannah's womb was shut up. Amen. Praise God. Hannah couldn't have any babies, and Panana was just pushing babies out, and she was taunting Hannah. Amen. Even though her husband loved her, Hannah still wanted a child. Praise God. We know what this is. Amen. We got to pray. What God gives to one, he, he can give to all. What does it say, man, to God? Uh, First Samuel, chapter, First Samuel uh, chapter 1, verse 27, if you want. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I asked him for. Amen. Hallelujah. God heareth and he answers. Amen. So what we're reading about now, we're reading about great, um, how the great people of God became great because they knew how to pray. Amen. Praise God. You want to be great in the kingdom? Learn how to pray. Praise God. Moses prayed in intercession for Israel and they were spared. And that's Deuteronomy 9. Chapter 9, verses 25 to 26. Let us read that. Amen. And I want to share with you, Moses prayed for that congregation, and that congregation came up against him many times. Amen. Just came up against Moses. Amen. His sister, his brother came up against them, said, you're not the only one that God speaks to. Amen. Hallelujah. And God turned, turned the sister into a leopard. Turned Miriam, she wound up with leprosy. Amen. Moses had to pray for her after she came up against them. After they talked about his wife, he had to pray that God, that God deliver her. Amen? Praise God. He had to intercede. Amen? Moses was a good shepherd. The Korites came up against Moses. Amen? Praise God. There was times when the people wanted to kill Moses. Amen? His own congregation. Go back. He it for real. Amen. This thing is for real. Anybody have Deuteronomy 9, 25 through 26? That's why we got to be careful. Amen. That's why as leaders, you don't want to become nobody God. Amen. You become their God. They'll crucify you. Listen, they'll, they'll cry Hosanna, but they'll crucify you too. 
Amen. Let, let Jesus be God. Amen. Because he was already crucified. They can't crucify him again. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let Jesus you said Deuteronomy be the 20. Amen. Deuteronomy, the ninth chapter, verses 25 through 26. I tell people all the time, I'm not your Lord. One person called me and said, why didn't you answer me when I called you? And that really wasn't even a, that, that was more of a social call. I told them, I ain't your God. I ain't got to answer you. You know what I'm saying? Praise God. Amen. I said, if you need an answer right away, you need to speak to Jesus. Because he says, Amen. when you call, I will answer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, let's not get this thing twisted. Amen. If you want someone to answer every time you call, you got to call on that name. Amen. Amen. What does that say? Deuteronomy 9. Verses 25 okay, gonna, through Yeah, 25 through 26. What does it say? It says, I lay prostrate before the Lord those 40 days and 40 nights because the Lord had said he would destroy you. I pray, mm. I pray to the Lord and said, Sovereign Lord, do not destroy your people, your own inheritance that you redeemed by your great power and brought out of, Israel, out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Amen. So the, the children of Israel sinned that God was going to destroy them where they were. But who prayed? Moses prayed. Amen. I'm telling you, prayer is power. Prayer will turn back the wrath of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I pray for myself. Father, I have sinned against thee. Lord, deliver me. Hallelujah. Amen. You got to know how to pray. Hallelujah. I pray for my children, natural and spiritual. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, don't give them what they deserve. Have mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Stay prayed up. You got to know how to cry mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so it says, then you pray three times a day, even at the risk of his own life. Amen. And so, beloved, you cannot love your life. Amen. So much that you ain't ready to give it up for the Lord. Amen. Then you pray because prayer is a command. Amen. So Daniel 610 says what? Let us look at Daniel 610. And then I want you all to be able to share some testimonies in which you prayed. And God moved on your behalf, amen, because I know you have some. The word says watch and pray. I'm over here watching and teaching. I got to stay focused. Okay, I have Daniel 6, chapter 10, verse. What is that? Okay. Daniel 6, chapter 10, verse. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks for his God as he did after time. Hallelujah, Jesus. Beloved, we don't need permission to pray. Amen. Hallelujah. The earth and the fullness thereof and everything that dwelleth within it belong unto God. He already told us to pray everywhere. So when this decree came down that they are not to pray to any other God but that statue that Nebuchadnezzar put up, what did Daniel do? It's better to obey God than to obey man. But if you don't learn the word of God, how can you know what God has said? Beloved, it is very important for you to study the word to, to show yourself approved unto God. Amen? You have to know this word at a kingdom standard. Amen? And to pray fervently and was, fought and was allowed to see the newborn Messiah. I love Anna. Anna was an intercessor, amen? And she was, she was a widow, praise God. And while Mary was pregnant with Jesus, Anna prayed, hallelujah. She prayed, praise God, amen. Hallelujah. And she was able to see the newborn Messiah, praise God, amen? Hallelujah. So, beloved, Amen. And I just want to go back to Moses because I believe when you read that, it said he prayed 40 days and 40 nights. It, he prayed for a, that wasn't just an all-night prayer. Praise God. That wasn't just an hour prayer. God was about to send his wrath upon his people that he delivered up out of Egypt. They said Moses prayed for days. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Sometimes we want change. Sometimes it's not coming quick. Amen. 
You have to labor in prayer. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Do anyone want to share times in, in which they prayed and they changed their faith or they got healed or delivered? Amen. Um, I can give a testimony in my past um, when I really used prayer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was on a job one time, and, you know, I was a lube technician, and I just started the first week that I couldn't catch on to what I was doing. And, you know, supervisor, I, and my spirit was telling me he was going back telling the manager things about me that, you know, like I wasn't trying to learn this, which was not true at all. And mm. I Fourth know. Witness. Right. So the manager called me and I was off. He called my house. And I was at home, and he said, I need you to come in and talk to you. And usually when you hear that, we all know it's a sign of trouble with a job. When they say come to the office, especially you off your home. And I don't know what made me do it, and I just got tired of going in and out of jobs, some through faults of my own, some it was not my fault. And I just said, Lord, I really believe they're trying to fire me today, and I didn't deserve this if it's coming. You know I'm trying to learn. You know I know what I'm doing. I don't know why these people are acting evil towards me. I don't. I don't. I have to send them to them. I know, know these people. But if it's about to happen, I need to protect me and keep this job till I find something better. And sure enough, I went to the office and the man told me, about, "Well, they say you're not catching on. You don't know what you're doing. And I don't know if I should keep you." Mm. I said, well, it's not true, sir. Um, I'm here when you ask me to be here on time. You know, I know how to turn a wrench to change the oil on a truck. I don't know why what the problem is. You know, okay, it might be my speed, but other than that, you know, I'm not taking hours on a truck. You know, well, mm. I don't know what's and he responded, I don't know what's making me do this. I don't know what's making me do this, but I'm going to give you a couple more days here, and if you need to show me what you can do. He said, I really just don't know because I fire people when I call them. I don't know what's making me do this. I don't know what's making me do this. Amen. Then all of a sudden he kept my job, and I eventually stayed there two years, and I went on somewhere else, you know. Um, but, you know, I knew when I prayed that day, I just said, I did it for five minutes because I said, Lord, you know, I don't have much time. I'm going to pray deep. You know, I pray. You know, I'm going through a lot. You know, I'm separated from my wife, but the end is near. I can accept divorce. Um, give, you know, you know, I'm trying to save it, but my son was young at the time, and you know, I just dealt with that, and you know, God led me to say it's time to leave that relationship and get a divorce. And you know, I just, you know, was so broken down and tired of running between jobs and trying to try to find a decent job, and I know. And I'd say it before I left the house, if you don't answer my prayer, I'll understand you know this place is not for me. And sure enough, that's what he did. And I didn't think Amen. I, didn't do it because he knew I didn't do anything wrong. But if it did come down to where I was going, it wouldn't hurt my feelings because I was at ease and I was willing to accept what happened when I got there. Amen. But, Praise God. It was just one of many examples I could go on, but that was just one that came to my mind right away. So on how Amen. show up. And we all need to realize that some of our prayers are not answered. I still feel that God is protecting you for something you can't see, and he got something better for you than where you feel that you feel hurt or upset. Amen. Praise God. Well, I tell you, we truly thank God for that testimony, amen, through Brother Darrell Golden, amen, and how the Lord prevailed for him. He chose to talk to God about it. And sometimes in those situations, we can choose to speak to other people. But believe me, you know, people can't help you like God can help you. Amen? Praise God. Unless you pray and God lead you to share it with someone else. Amen? We have to be mindful because sometimes talking to other people can make it worse. Amen? Praise God. Amen? Hallelujah. Especially if they twist what it is that you have said. Amen? But the man of God spoke to God. And I love how his boss said, I don't know 
why I am doing this. I don't know what's making me do this. Amen. Listen, we serve a God that is the God of the marketplace. Amen. Listen, he ain't just your savior in church. Amen. He's your savior in and through all things. Amen. Praise God. And so we thank God for that great testimony. Do anyone else have a testimony tonight concerning a situation that they went through and they had to pray? Amen. Share your testimony, woman of God. I can think of several examples. I remember that when I was in nursing school, I used to study really, really hard, like six hours a day every day. That was my rule, that I could not be less than six hours, and I would start, like, really early in the morning. But it was, like, a lot of patho and chemistry and pharmacology, and it was just, it was just like, really, really difficult. So I used to study so much that by the time I got to the test, I would be worked up in a frenzy. I would have so much anxiety. And it was on multiple tests, but I just, I remember this particular one, it was the final, and it was 100 questions, and I was like, maybe I skipped a couple, and I was up to question like 25, and maybe we had like a half an hour left. And so I was, I just put my head down on the desk, and I was like, God, I'm going to fail. I was like, after all that study, I am going to fail, and um and I was like, you know, I, I just can't do it. You know, I've done the work. You said faith without works is dead. And I said, Lord, but I know there's no failure in you, so if you would just help me. When I read mm, the question, mm. I literally heard the Holy Ghost go, see. <laughs> mm, I read the next mm. question, A. I read the next, I went back to the questions that I didn't answer, he gave me each and every answer. I think I ended up getting like a 98 on that exam. And okay. I remember scoring so high in school, and people thought that it was me, but it was the Holy Ghost because I struggled with certain systems like cardiology. And I was telling the Lord, and I was at home, and I was trying to study, and I was so frustrated. And I said, God, I just don't understand it. I just don't get it. And I felt mm. free. And in my dream, the, 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 the ceiling lit up, and God began to explain cardiology to me in my sleep. Mm. And when I woke up, I had a better understanding. But Amen. when I first started working as a nurse, um, I was like, Lord, you know, um, giving blood is, like, so important, and I haven't really given blood. And that's what I was saying to the nurse they, they, they pair you with a nurse to teach you about the equipment and all of that. And I said that to the nurse, and I remember his name was Richard, and I was like, you know, I haven't given blood. I'm going to pray about it. And so the next day when I went to work, we had to give, like, three or four transfusions. He had to give up, like, one of the pages. He was like, we can't do all these transfusions. And before I left for the day, he was like, Tatiana, please don't pray and ask God anymore. <laughs> <laughs> blood. He was like, because in all my years, and I've worked for, I think it was like 15, 20 years, he said, I've never had to give so many transfusions in one day. Amen. So that, that's another example. But I had a, I had a, a, a supervisor, and she just kept giving me a hard time because she would try to wear you out. She wanted to do, do, you to do all like this overtime and everything. And she didn't like me because I'm not Caribbean. And, you know, most of the nurses that are black, they're Caribbean and African. And I'm like, you know, the American girl. It was just few of us, very few of us. And she just kept giving me a hard time. And, mm. I mean, she just kept coming after me. She just kept coming after me. And I would pray. And whenever I prayed and I would be like, trouble her, God, don't let her get sleep. She would come like the next day. She would be super nice to me. But she kept coming for me. And I said, God, she just won't stop. She was at that hospital for 40 years, and they fired her. And I honestly mm. believe that part of the reason why she got fired is because she would not leave me alone. So, I mean, those are my Well, well I'm going to tell you something. God, listen, God is our defense. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, you know, I just thank God for that testimony to the woman of God, how God just truly showed up for her and how she – so the manifestation of his power through prayer. And we're speaking of answered prayer, praise God, amen. And so the, yeah. that, that was really powerful. But there but was one to, thing that I she want... said. One minute, there's one thing that one she more. said that stood out to me. One minute, woman of God. There's one thing that she said that stood out to me, and that one thing that she said was, 
um, Lord, I know that there is no failure in Christ. Amen. Praise God. I thought that that was quite humbling. Amen. Praise God. Because in Christ there is no lack. You know, all wisdom is there in him. Praise God. And if we be in him, amen, hallelujah, we should not have any lack. And so the Bible says that if you lack wisdom, you can ask that God will give it unto you, amen? And then he tells us in all of our getting, get an understanding, amen? And so I'm going to, Sister Titan, I'm going to allow you to share one more thing, but I want you all to be mindful because there's other people on the line as well, and we want everyone to have an opportunity to share. So go ahead and share your one more thing. What I was going to say is I was on um, – a Bible school class last night, and it was about prayer. And she said, "Oh, praise God!" That really, um, a lot of the, what you said tonight, she was saying. And she brought up Hannah, and she brought up Anna, and and she said, "You leave God out, you wear yourself out." So before you go to the phone, go to the throne. That's all. I wanted to say. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And we thank God for that share. And I, I love that she said that she was on a study last night because today we were supposed to teach on Godhead too, amen? But I was pressed in my spirit to do prayer, praise God, amen? And so I just thank God that there's other people as well, other leaders that is teaching on prayer because prayer is essential. Anyone else want to share tonight concerning any testimony where they prayed and prayer prevailed, Amen. They saw the power in of prayer when they used the privilege of prayer. Anyone else sharing tonight? Okay, so since there's no one else to share, we're going to move on and try to get the rest of this in. Amen? And, beloved, you're right. You don't want to wear yourself out. You want God in it. Amen? Praise God. Amen? God is willing to answer prayer his readiness to answer our prayers surpasses even our willingness to provide necessary things for our children. The Lord is more eager to open than we are to knock. Amen? And so, beloved, we have to be mindful of this. Amen? Now, I'm going to give you three different levels of prayer. Let us turn to Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11. Amen? Praise God. I, I love this scripture here. God is more eager. He's telling us how to get the door open. He's telling us what we need to do to find. Or, you, you know, or he's telling us, amen, what we need to do to receive. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is divine biblical instruction. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. And so the Bible tells us to be anxious for nothing but in everything prayer in supplication. Amen. Praise God. You want it, pray about it. Amen. But be careful Amen. what you ask them for. <laughs> be very careful right. what you ask them for. That's right. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11 says, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that Asseth receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you whom of his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Amen. And so he's eager to give. He's eager to hear and answer. Amen. But I love these three levels of prayer. It says, um, ask and it shall be given unto you. Amen. And I believe that asking is like that first level of prayer. Amen because we're asking for all kind of things, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe that this is something that we do when we are new in our walk with Christ, praise God. And then it says, um, seek and ye shall find. Amen. Praise God. So once you get past that action stage, amen, hallelujah, what you start seeking for is the presence of God. Amen. Seek and you shall find. 
Seek him while he is near. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. My God. Because when we learn as we grow spiritually that if we have the presence of God, in him we have everything that we need. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So we're no longer just asking for things or or asking for him to do things because we know that when we have his presence, when he is present, all these things are possible. And then it says, knock, and it shall be open unto you. Amen. And I believe that when we come up out of the outer court into the inner court, past the inner court into the holy place or the most holy place, there is a door. Praise God. Amen. The Bible describes this door to the holy, to the most holy place. Amen. Hallelujah. That is where the presence of God is. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. So we want to be knocking and opening doors to glory. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory, God. And, beloved, I want to tell you that doors open in different ways. There's all kinds of different doors. Amen. There's doors that you have to turn a knob to open, that you have to put a key in to open. Amen. There's doors that open automatically. We see this. We step in front of some doors and it just slides. Amen. You press a button and it just open. Amen. Automatically. But and then, hallelujah, there's some doors that you have to put some pressure on in prayer. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so exercise your privilege in, your, in, in prayer, amen, and receive the power needed, amen, that you can obtain, amen, the very things that God wants to give unto you anyway. He wants you to have this access, amen. Jesus, our greatest example. And so Jesus is our greatest example in prayer, praise God, amen. And so Elijah was good, Joshua was good, King David, Hannah, Moses, Daniel, Anna, all of them were good examples in prayer. Amen? But Jesus is the best example. Why? Because we know Jesus is God. Amen? Hallelujah. We know that Jesus, so it says, prayer held highly, prayer held high priority for Jesus Christ. Scripture records that he often prayed early in the morning and sometimes prayed through the night. Praise God. And if this is how Jesus prayed, amen, hallelujah, this is how we ought to pray. Amen? Mark Amen. chapter 1, verse 35 says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, so he rose before the sun came up. Amen. Hallelujah. He went out and departed into a solitary place, and there he prayed. Amen. And so a lot of people like corporate prayer, and there's nothing wrong with corporate prayer. But Jesus is our greatest example of prayer. We're going to find that as we continue to read these scriptures, Jesus prayed alone. Praise God. He rose early, separated himself from the disciples, and said to a remote place, and he prayed. Amen. When he prayed all night, he prayed alone. Praise God. We're going to see here in scripture where he even prayed after he ministered. So Jesus was full of power. Why? Because he did a lot of praying, praise God. It didn't take him long to cast out a devil. Why? Because prayer is privilege and power. Isn't that right? Jesus was so prayed out that when he walked on the scene, the devils was crying out, why do you come to persecute me? Amen? Woo, hallelujah. Praise God. Luke six twelve, and it came to pass in those days, that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Amen? After ministering to the multitudes, Jesus would often find a private place to spend time in prayer. Mark chapter 6, verse 46 says, And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. Amen? Luke chapter 5, verse 16 says, and he withdrew himself into the wilderness and he prayed. Praise God. Amen. And so, beloved, Jesus did a lot of praying. Amen. Before he completed, he prayed through, throughout his assignment and before he completed his assignment. Amen. In the Garden of Gethsemane, we see the Lord's most intense praying. Jesus' triumphant victory at Calvary was actually won on his knees in Gethsemane. 
where he prayed, not my will, but thine will be done. And I, I remember when God was using me, and he still uses me mightily, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. But he was using me so mighty. Amen. Praise God. And people wanted to know, well, what did you do? How did you get it? Amen. And I would say, on my knees. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And that may mean something else to the world, but to, but to those of us in the church, amen, we get it on bending knee. We, we get it in the face of God. We obtain the power that we obtain through prayer, through relationship with him, a relationship of proximity, a relationship of intimacy, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I would tell people on my knees, this is how I got it. God kept me in prayer. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Things that I would see in the spirit, I had to pray. Praise God. Things that I would go through, I had to pray. Praise God. Things that I wanted from God, I had to pray. Amen. Praise God. And so, amen, Luke chapter 22, verse 44 says, and being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Amen. Now, you know that's a serious prayer. Amen. Hebrews 5 and 7 says, Jesus, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayer and supplication with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And so do you ever get to the point in, in prayer where you are crying, praise God, amen, hallelujah, where there is a desperateness, amen, hallelujah, Lord, I need you in, I need you right now, amen. Well, you're not alone if you have prayed like that because Jesus the Christ has also prayed like that, amen. And so, beloved, amen. let us touch on, amen, praise God. It's all right to cry and pray. Amen. Praise God. It's all right to pray in agony. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. As long as we put pray sincerely. Amen. And without doubting. Amen. What should we pray for? There is no end to the list of things for which we should seek God in earnest prayer. Scripture gives us examples of many things for which we should pray. Amen. And, beloved, before I give you these things, I want to hear from you. What are some of the things that you pray for? Amen? And when you pray for these things, are you led by the Holy Spirit? Is there urging? Or, you know, is it just your relationship to, you know, pray? Amen? I what are some of the things that you pray for? Amen. Go ahead, Brother Golden. Well, I've prayed for in the past a relationship with a woman that never did transpire. And I didn't get mad with God, but I felt he showed me reasons why I need to be gone and leave this alone and walk away. Uh, and also, you know, you know, when I pray, I pray mainly for thanks. And where I'm short and struggling, and I ask him to guide me to remove these things. But I also do that relationship. Amen. So, Praise therefore, God. Therefore, I think without prayer, even though I don't pray daily, I have, if I, if I, if I had to put a number on, I'd say, okay, once a month, which is not good at all, if we look at it compared to others. But obviously, it must be here in my prayer somewhere because I also do servitude, which even before now, I did go to church and I did cut back. So, <laughs> you know, my thing is, Obviously, when I spent some time with God and served him, he must have done something right to hear my prayer. So I think in relationship, he's, I'm not telling nobody not to pray because everybody's situation is different, how they build with God in relationship and grow. But for me, I feel that he's blessing me. So I stay in relationship and serving him as well as prayer is how I you know, have, have, have a multitude of God. Amen. Well, we thank Brother Darrell Golden. We thank you, man, the God, for your share. And prayer is a part of that relationship, your communication with him. And we pray that this, this message, the word that is being planted in your spirit, will inspire you to 
pray more. Amen. Praise God. Like you right. said, everybody is different, but I believe that God is emphasizing prayer. And if we're going to obey the scriptures that were set forth today, he tells us to pray all the time, everywhere. Praise God. Amen. And I, I do, sometimes I just find myself talking to God. Amen. And it does, you, you could talk to God, you don't have to be on your knees to talk to him. You don't have Amen. to be laying prostrate to talk to him. Amen. I remember, I'm going to give this quick testimony. I was coming from seeing Mother Roberts in the hospital when she had her surgical procedure. And, I, you know, New York is tense. You know, I I don't live in a place where I'm seeing so many people or so many people that is battling so many different things, amen? And so in New York, when I was in New York, my head was on a swivel, amen? And so I'm walking up the block, and this woman is at one of these posts that they have out there. I guess it's some type of phone system, and she's yelling, come and get me, come and get me, and she's pulling her hair, and I walk by her, and as I'm walking... I started bonding the devil. I said, Satan, you're going to let her go right now in the name of Jesus. She's not going to be tormented in my presence. You will not torment her another day. I command you to loose her now and walk in dry places, and I bond every spirit of backlash and retaliation. Now, this is me walking up the street. And I looked back, and that woman looked up at me. She was no longer yelling and screaming. She was no longer Mm -hmm. pulling out her hair. Amen. I didn't, I didn't go shake her hand or do anything because God showed up and I kept going about my business. Amen. 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 And she sat right there in peace on the ground. Amen. Wow. In Midtown. Sat right there in peace on the ground. Right? Because oh, I chose to use the privilege of a prayer that God has given unto us. It was just too much going on in the atmosphere. Amen. Praise God. It was just too much going on. And so I want to encourage you to really come to know the privilege that God gives you in prayer, amen, and the power that comes with it. Amen, praise God. I pray for her, but I also pray for myself because I didn't want to have to battle what was battling her. Praise God, amen. So that's why I praise against the spirit of backlash and retaliation. So, beloved, be encouraged. You know, when you get up in the morning, talk to God. Talk to him. Amen. Praise God. Hold a conversation with him. Amen. And it don't have to be long and draw down and repetitious. It could be while you're in the shower. Talk to God. Because I talk to God a lot while I'm, you know, while I'm in my shower. Because that's my private time. Amen. And so I I get to talk to him. Amen. Praise God. Uh, And when you talk to him, he answers. Amen. Yes. Talk to God. If, if you show up, all you got to do is press in prayer. Amen. Anyone else want to share? And that was bre- very good, um, um, Brother Golden. That was really good. And like you said, our, our relationships with God is different. They're personal. Amen. But, we, but the word of God is speaking to us today because God wants us to be more intimate in prayer. Amen. He, he, Amen. He's calling us and drawing us nearer unto him. Anyone else want to share tonight? for um, some of the things that they may have prayed for? Praise the Lord. Praise this the Lord. Tatiana, I just had to switch phones because my phone is, it does, it, oh, suddenly it doesn't want to charge and it was about to die. So I had to get on this mm. one. But um, most Amen. recently, um, God has just had me praying for other people. Mm, good. Um, just praying for other people. Um, particularly my enemies. Um, Amen. Just praying for my enemies, praying for my enemies. And then, you know, at the end of it, I include myself. And I was about to, like, end my prayer, and God said, (laughs) he let me know, "Uh uh-uh, you got to learn to listen. And so, you know, with that dialogue, a lot of times I'm, I, I'm just talking out loud. I know my neighbors next door probably think I'm crazy. Um, yeah, cause I just be in here just talking out loud in the bathroom talking. Right. But, you know, the other day, God let me know, like, uh-uh, like, you're not done. Like, at the end of prayer, listen, because sometimes God has instruction or he just wants to tell you something. Um, but a lot of times I just, you know, I'll just keep going. Okay, God, I got to go now. And, 
you know, I'm going to do such and such, such and such, and God just let me know that I needed to listen more at the end of saying all that I want to say so he can say what he has to say. Mm-hmm. Amen. And, you know, with the very thing that Sister Titiana shared is strategy and prayer because a lot of us just go into prayer and we talk, but we don't stay long enough to listen. Any type of prayer is conversation. Conversation, if you have a conversation with anyone, is normally a two-way street. You know, sometimes we do talk to people and they just go on and on and on and on and won't let you get a word in edgewise, amen? But that's not really a conversation, you know? And so we don't want to out-talk God. You know, the Bible says acknowledge him in all of our ways and he will um, direct our path. So he does give us instruction, amen? And so we want to be able to receive and let him download in you what is needed. So sometimes after praying, or maybe we should make it a habit after praying, to just lay out and hear what God wants to minister to us, amen, what he want to implant in us, amen, or things amen. that he want to pull out your heart and things that he want to sow in, amen, praise God. And so I'm glad that the woman of God shared that, you know, that, you know, the Holy Spirit dealt with her and said, you're not listening, amen, or, you know, you're not, you're not being obedient. Amen, because, yes, you prayed, you talked to me, but true, true relationship is a two-way street. Amen. This is why we shouldn't just go to God asking for things and we not doing anything. Amen. It's, it's a two-way street. And I, and I always gave these five foundational truths for relationship, fidelity, trust, truth, responsibility, and accountability. We have to be responsible and accountable for our own relationship with God. Amen. And the word of God is telling us that we ought to pray. And it tells us how often we need to pray. And it tells us that we ought to pray continually. So, woman of God, that was really a good share. That's good strategy for those of you that don't get still in the presence of God or don't take out the time to listen for his voice after you have prayed. Amen. Sometimes you just have to lay out and wait to receive. Amen. Do anyone else want to share tonight? That was really good. Amen. I want to go back for a minute to Brother Darrell Golden share. Amen. And he mentioned that he prayed concerning relationship. Amen. And what I want to say is that um, our relationship with God, the time that we spend with him will depict how much of a relationship it really is. It's like your relationship with a friend or a spouse. If you don't spend no time, it's going to be hard to really develop a relationship of intimacy, right? So um, relationship building takes time, right? And I want you all to see that in Christ, the he-man and the she-man, that means the male and the female, even though in Christ there is no male or female, but the, the... we are the bride of Christ. You know, the, the male is not a husband in Christ. In Christ, he is the bride like the woman is the bride, right? And so I believe that we know through the word of God what type of wife Christ wants. He gave us his spirit to make us into that and to teach us how to have fellowship and relationship with him that is our husband. Amen. Christ is our husband. Amen. So he teaches us that through the word of God, it puts demands on us to develop this relationship of intimacy with him. We are constantly being drawn in. Amen. That we would give more time to him than we we give to the world. Like the woman of God said, amen, we don't have to wear ourselves out if we spend time with God. Amen. And so I want you to be mindful of that. Amen. God doesn't just want to date you. He don't want to have a one-night stand with you. He's married to you. He gave you his name. Amen. Amen. He wants you to spend time with him. Praise God. Amen. 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 And so this, this is very important. And because as a male and a female, we are the bride of Christ as the church, right? Amen. We should know, and he's our husband, the only way that we know of what type of husband we should be or what type of husband we want 
We only know that through our relationship with him that is the ultimate husband. And the only way that a woman will know what type of bride she should be or what type of wife she should be or a man should know what type of wife he wants, someone that, that is in submission to authority or someone that he too can submit to, amen, because the Bible says a husband and wife ought to submit one to another, you know, that character is built through their relationship in Christ. So if you are tied to someone that don't have a relationship in Christ and you have a relationship in Christ, but now you have all these expectations of them, listen, they ain't spending no time with God. How would they know? That's right. Amen? Amen. And then some of us proclaim that we spend time with God and the character still ain't there. Something wrong with that. Because like Sister Tatiana said, there ain't ain't no lack in Christ. There's no failure. Why are we not getting this thing? There's no failure in him. Amen? Amen. Amen, praise God. And so I said that to encourage you why it is important for you to have a relationship with God, for the person that you are going to uh, marry, to have a, a, a personal relationship with God. You know, it's important for them to have a prayer life. Amen, because the Bible says one chase a thousand, two chase ten that he's talking about in prayer. Amen? He's talking about prayer. Hallelujah. That person should be able to touch and agree with you in prayer. Amen? So there should be things that you all have in common spiritually. But I want to give this really quick because it's 927 already, and I'm hoping that when we come back, we're going to look at how should we pray. Amen? But what should we pray about? Prayer, we should pray for our physical needs, Matthew 6, 11. Let us pull that up really quick because I want you all to see in Scripture what that says. Matthew 6, 11. That's the NIV. This is the KJV. It says, give us this day our daily bread. So we should pray for our physical needs. And I believe that that's a good prayer to pray early in the morning, amen, before you leave out the door, amen, hallelujah, Jesus, because listen, you, you, don't, you, want to put God, you want to put God first. God want to be first and forefront in every area of your life. So when you start your day, you know, sometimes I believe that I do God a disservice when I start speaking to other people and I hadn't even spoke to him yet. And I say that he's the source of everything for me. Amen. So if I start speaking to other people or listening to things or being on Facebook and doing this, and I had not had a conversation with God, I had not even said thank you for letting me see another day, something wrong. Amen. So we could pray. Amen. We could pray for our physical needs, pray for your spiritual needs, and I'm going to give you these scriptures, and I want you to write them down, Matthew 26 and 41, Jude one twenty. James 5.13, and Colossians 1, 9 through 12. Listen, we're going to pray for our physical needs, but we also need to pray for our spiritual needs. Amen. Let us read Colossians 9 verses. What am I talking about? Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 12, praying for your spiritual needs. You said Colossians 1, 9 through yeah, 12. Colossians. Yes, yes. Okay, so since we first heard about you, we've kept you always in our prayers that you would receive the perfect knowledge of God's pleasure over your lives, making your reservoirs of every kind of wisdom and spiritual understanding. We pray that you would walk in the ways of true righteousness, pleasing God in every good thing you do. Then you'll become fruit-bearing branches, yielding to his life and maturing in the rich experience of knowing God in his fullness. And we pray that you would be energized with all his explosive power from the realm of his magnificent glory, filling you with great hope. Your heart can soar with great, with joyful gratitude when you think of how God made you worthy to receive his glorious inheritance freely given to us 
by living in the light. Amen. Praise God. And so, beloved, I love this prayer that the Apostle Paul had. I love the book of Colossians, period. But we need to pray for our spiritual needs. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Even before I get into a study, I pray that God give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Amen. I ask that he make the word life for me in areas of my life that I need because only he knows what I need. I may think I know what I need, but God knows what I need. Amen. Before I taught this Bible study class and I began to um, look into the lesson, I had to stop and pray. And I said to God, I said, God, make the word that is being planted in the in the garden of the hearts of your people. Let this word be life for them. Let this word sprout up, my God. See, because what I'm looking for is not just for you to obey the word. I'm looking for the word of God to stand up in you. Amen. The Bible says that that Elijah ate the word of God and Ezekiel ate the word of God and it stood him on his feet. Praise God. So I'm looking for the God for God word to stand you up prostrate, to order your steps. Amen. A righteous man's steps is ordered by the word of God. Amen. So I'm looking for the word to work in your heart and in your life, praise God. Change takes place just like when Brother Darrell goes and prays and the man and, and the and the um and his boss, the supervisor said, I do not know why I am doing this because normally I just fire people. Amen. Praise God. Listen, he prayed a word, and God had to put something in that man's heart that he could not resist. Amen? Amen. He could not resist it. He, he, he could not comprehend why is he doing this. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And so, beloved, pray for your spiritual needs. Amen? Hallelujah. And, um... Which one is this? James 5.13 says, is any among you afflicted, let him pray. Is any merry, let him sing psalms. Amen? Amen. This is all about, all about praying for our spiritual needs. What does Jude 1.20 say? Let's see here. We want Jude, Jude 120. chapter 1. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I have that if you need a reader. You can read it, man to God. All right, thank you. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. This this scripture here, which we have read before, this scripture here is telling us how to build ourselves up. The Holy Ghost will build you up. And it says praying in the Holy Ghost. That's praying in your prayer language, praise God. We touched on that already, amen? In Matthew 26 and 41, what does that say? All right. Okay, I have it if you need a reader. You can read it. All right. Matthew 26, chapter 41, verse says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen, beloved. Did you hear that? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. This is praying for your spiritual needs. Said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Listen, I'm a witness to that. Amen, hallelujah. In the midst of things, I'm telling you, people will think you're crazy. Because you have to open your mouth and begin to pray, and they think you're talking to them. I will not turn aside from the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And this is praying for our spiritual needs. Amen. We need to pray for forgiveness. Amen. Praise God. And that's Matthew um, 6 and 12. And Matthew 6 and 12 says, I think this is the NIV that I have here. It says, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Amen? And so, beloved, we got to pray for forgiveness. Amen? Praise God. We know when we are wrong or in error. How do we know? 
because we have a helper that convicts us. Amen? We know because we're in the word. Amen? And if the helper didn't say nothing, he'll say it through the word. Amen? Praise God. Have you ever been in the midst of doing something the Holy Spirit stopped you in your tribe? Hallelujah. Amen. Through relationship, amen. Through relationship and prayer and dialogue with God, he will stop you in your tracks. Amen? amen. Praise God. Amen. So that means that even before we sin, he will let us know. Amen. Because he already knows what we're about to do. Beloved, I truly believe that we cannot hide from the eyes of God. There's nowhere where we can go that he can't see. Amen? Praise God. Amen. And so we ought to pray for deliverance, Matthew 6.13. All right. Uh, You ready for a reading for Matthew 6.13? Amen. Okay. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Listen, we ought to pray to be for deliverance. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And pray for your family, your friends and acquaintances, all people. First Timothy two one. What does that say? So now you don't have to say apostle said. You can say God said. This is his word. Okay. It says First Timothy chapter 2, I first verse, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. And now read verse 2. Okay. That says, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. Amen. Praise God. So we have to pray for our government, you know, people that are in position of authority over us, over our school system, amen, um, over our economy, amen. We, we must pray, amen. praise God, amen. And if we're lacking in prayer and things are going haywire, you know, what do we do? Uh, can we just point the finger at the person in office or the person in authority? Or, you know, can we point back at us? Because are right. we praying? Are we praying? Are we doing what God is telling us to do? And so prayer for your enemy is Matthew five forty four. So when you don't know what to do with your enemies or for your enemies, amen, just pray. They may not want your prayer, but, you know, you don't need their permission to pray, you know, for them um, in your private time. Amen? Amen. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44 says, But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. I think lately I've been blocking people, praise God. Block, 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 block. Uh, but now I, I, I got I to gotta just love them. I, <laughs> praise God. Amen. I've been denying uh, access, but the Bible says here, but I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Is that not the word of God? Amen. Amen. Listen, it's real. It's real. Amen. Also, it says here, pray for your church, your pastors, and spiritual leaders. That's First Thessalonians 5.25. There, there's so much that we can learn about prayer. Amen. I just want you all to see the scriptures. First Thessalonians five twenty five. All right. You need somebody to read it? Yeah, you can read it. Okay. It says in First Thessalonians uh, five twenty five, brethren, pray for us. Amen. 
Apostle Paul is speaking to the congregation, and he said, brothers and sisters, pray for us. So even though the apostles and, and Timothy and Titus and whoever was with him, Apollos, even though they prayed for the congregations that they went to, they also in turn asked them to pray for them. Amen? Amen. Praise God. We need to we put pray for our enemies, pray for our leaders. We need to pray for our civic and governmental leaders, First Timothy 1, 2, um, sec- First Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 2, we read that. Pray for the gospel will be preached freely without restraint. Second Thessalonians 3, 1, let us read that. We need, these are things that we need to pray about, and there's scripture reference for it. Okay, that says right there, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified, even as it is with you. Amen. Praise God. And that's what I prayed prior to um, coming into the Bible study, because I'm praying that the word brings about an increase in your life. Amen. Amen. That the word brings about a transformation, that it washes you with the water of the washing with the word, that it gives you the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding of God. Amen. Amen. Free course, that the word is free to work without any demonic influence. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And so we want to pray for the lost, Romans 10, 1. How many people still praying for the Lord? Oh, Amen. Amen. The Lord need prayer. I pray because I was once lost and He found me, but somebody prayed for me. Amen. 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 You said First Timothy. Romans ten one. Oh, Romans ten one. I got you. Right. Mhm. It says, "Brother, my heart's desire." And prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Apostle Paul is the writer of the um, epistle of Romans, and he prayed for Israel, his brethren, that they might be saved. They already crucified the Messiah, but he prayed that they might be saved. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So we have to pray for the Lord. Matthew 9, 38 is another prayer for the Lord. So we have to pray for their salvation. Matthew 9:38 says, "Ask the Lord of the harvest therefore to send out workers into his harvest field." Amen. And so one of the ways to pray for the Lord is to pray that there is workers. Amen or that he make us a worker, praise God, that we don't just sit idly by and don't be a witness to nobody. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So we should pray for ministers, preachers, and missionaries around the world. You find that in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 18 through 20. We should pray for those who are sick. That's in James five sixteen. We should pray for those who are oppressed, afflicted, or in hardship. And you find that in James 5, chapter thir- chapter 5, verses 13. Amen? This list mentions only a few of the things for which we should pray. All of our requests and petitions should be brought to the throne of God in prayer, and the list, and the list of needs is endless. Amen? And so we know that there are some needs that we may have that may not have been listed. And it doesn't mean that we don't bring it to the throne of grace. Amen? Amen. So Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 says, be careful. And that careful word means fearful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. 1 John 5, 15 says, and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desired of him. Because we read earlier that he's eager to give 
He's eager to open doors. He's eager to be found. Amen? Amen. After we have prayed for all the situations that we know, we can also pray for those things that we do not know. Amen? By Amen. praying in the spirit or with the spirit in tongues, we can pray for people and situations that are unknown to us. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Amen? In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15 says, What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. So praying in the spirit is praying in tongues, and praying with the understanding is praying in English. Amen? Or whatever your language is, or whatever your language is, amen, that you understand or that others will understand. Amen? And so when we return back to this lesson, we are going to be on how should we pray. Amen? That's where we're going to start off at, amen? And so, beloved, I am going to try to hand out this assignment and get you all the homework to it as well, amen, that you may be blessed through it and that you can also go through it on your own, that you can reinforce within yourself, you know, these scriptures that they may bless you, amen? And I believe that the recording will also be released, amen, for um, your further empowerment and edification. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And so do anyone want to share on tonight what it is that they received through the Bible study, what blessed you, what stood out, anything that the Word spoke that now you believe that you would do different? Um, I just, uh, well, I want to say thanks to everyone that came out tonight and Listen to the word uh, led by your apostle heard. I thought uh, I think you did a great job of letting myself and others know what the power of prayer can do. And it was truly enriching for me because, you know, the key word all night stress was prayer and how it must be included in relations, which I will take with me uh, from here. Therefore, if you truly want to have more of an enhanced relationship with God. Not to say that God won't forget us who don't believe in him, but also it'll just strengthen to the core of knowing God. But what I took from the night was uh, Ephesians 6 had many examples on how to build faith, uh, faith mm-hmm. relationships in Christ and in the world. Not just in Christ, but on your you know, if you choose to have an intimate part, romantic partner, um, you know, how do I build a Christ-like relationship? Because truly, to me, no relationship can survive a special romantic or a family without knowing God. Amen. Uh, um, I also took from the night, always put the armor of God on you wherever you go, um, whether it be your job or uh, your family, your everyday walk, um, when you have on the arm and breastplate of God, you truly will stand for something and won't fall for anything. And never let your carnal thoughts thank you. Never let your carnal thoughts ruin your life. Uh so many people don't realize and we've talked about this in past Bible studies how as even more tonight, how flesh is weak and how we cannot allow our flesh to get us in trouble and put us in the wrong mm. places. Jesus. So, you know, it's one that I think is food for thought, and we need to remember that next time when these things come within our mind. Amen. That, you know, we don't we don't want to be put in the wrong places or the wrong predicaments Amen. in doing that. Um, thank you. Also, God is a prayer answering God. Use yes. prayer yes. to 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 pray to fight daily battles. Uh, you know, if there's struggles in family, or a parent have kids, or, you know, if the situation is stressing you out, 
You just ask God, take it over, and pray on it, and he will definitely find the results on it. Never fails. Amen. Um, I also learned that Moses, which was a shock to me, had people in his flock that uh, they no longer want to believe in him, that he would carry them out of Israel, and they wanted him removed. But he played mm-hmm. in God to these people that they would see that he is his disciple, and he will carry them out of Israel and out of persecution. And those that believe saw the course and were free when he parted the Red Sea, and they went on to the free land. So, you know, if Moses withstood, you know, non-believers and kept God safe, then we can do it too. Amen. Just that simple. And just two more points, and I'm going to um, be done. Uh, always pray in earnest. You know, just be clear and confess what you want. Don't skip about it. And don't be praying in doubt because when you have doubt, mm-hmm. you're in the enemy, which in turn can, can, can clutter your thoughts. You just outright say, that's what I want and why, and that's it. Because if you don't pray and tell him what you want, as the song says, tell him what you want, then he's not going to know what you're talking about. So be earnest in prayer. I learned that tonight from the Bible study. And also, I thought you said Matthew 26, 41 is a great place to go and uh, read on in prayer. And also, pray for not just yourself and in thanks, but pray for others. Pray for the lost. Pray for fellow man. Pray for your leaders in the community, your politicians, the sick, shut in. Uh, pray for your neighbor. Pray for even your enemy. Even somebody you know don't like you. Just say pray. You know, if you've done wrong to them, say, Father God, I don't know where they're lost that or what they have against me. God, may you touch them. Amen. You know, what a better place this world would be if we all were in prayer and knew God. But Unfortunately, it's not the case, but we're not going to persecute people that don't know God. We're just going to pray that they ask to come to know God. If they don't, just pray that God's blood will walk with them daily in life. Amen. So, you know, that's what I took from tonight's lesson. And I just want to add that, you know, since we brought up politics and politicians, I, I don't know I'm assuming it is wherever you live at. I know here in Virginia where I live at, we're voting for governor. So we need to let our voices be heard at the polls again. You know, somebody mm-hmm. talking about, oh, your vote don't count and uh, this kind yeah, of Well, you know, well, that's right. Why complain and put things mm-hmm. down if you choose to be part of the process? So, yeah, you know, I don't, I, hey, man, I don't, I don't know where you live, each of us live at listening, but if you Come definitely – Exercise your right to vote because so many of our forefathers and sisters in slavery died, and not just that, of people who were civil rights leaders died for the right to vote. That's why I vote. You know, Amen. I was once lost in not voting, and it took my ex wife made me realize and the reason why I need to vote. So please do that for those that are not here with us for us to have a decent life and, and for our life to live just to be a part of the United States of America. Amen. That's all Amen. That's all, that's all, thank you. That's all I have to say is may we all go and serve the Lord in all in prayer but our daily living. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Those are some great points that the man of God made. Sister Titiana, are you sharing tonight? Thank you. Uh, yes. What I wanted to say is um, what really stood out to me was like strategy and prayer. And I remember seeing the movie War Room which is really yeah. a movie about yeah. um, prayer and wow. prayer strategy. Mm-hmm. And, the, and you know, as long as we're here, we're, we're all, we're going to have trouble, you know, because um, uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's our cross. Um, and if we suffer with him, we'll reign with him. But um, for me, what I've noticed, like with my walk with Christ is that um, the times where I've had the, it was where it was most difficult um, for me to pray or for me to be consistent in prayer was um, when I couldn't trace him. 
and I would say, God, mm. I feel like you're you're hiding yourself from me. I feel like you're not talking to me. And so um, the one thing that I learned from that is it's not really um, about feelings, and um, you may not always um, – no, no, you may not always feel that God is there, but he's there all the time. And so Amen. that's the, the one thing that I've learned um, uh, about prayer. And I remember Pastor Brown used to tell us all the time that if the devil could break your prayer life, he got you. Because that's mm-hmm. where your relationship ties with him. And he, I'm even, like, reminded of the scripture because I said, God, I don't want it to be in the end. You say, depart from me, for I know you not. And so in order for you to really know him, um, besides his word, because I remember even like the other day, I, I prayed and God said, you're missing some vital pieces. That's what the Holy Ghost like, let me know. And he said, prayer, praise, and don't forget my word, because what are you going to stand on? And so that's, you know, that's what I got out of it, and that's what God has been dealing um, um, with pieces don't forget that it, it's not really tied to feeling that even when you can't trace me you should be in my faith you should be humbling yourself before me and seeking me just the same you know it's not just um uh when uh all is well but when things are not well that's when you should even pray the more and sometimes it can be hard and i know for me i don't know about anybody else but i know as god gives the increase to me oh, i start to experience some things, not trying to be deep, um, supernaturally, um, and sometimes it frightens me, but God let me know that I'm with you, you know? Um, Amen. And I remember when Apostle Asia um, told me about how she put uh, the atomic prayer on that night, and I've had the last couple of nights, I've had to put the word on because, you know, those watch time hours, mm-hmm. you know, you know, but I... I I've got the victory in Jesus' name. That's all I want to say. <laughs> hey, hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank God for all of that that was shared, and I'm so happy that the Holy Spirit used the woman of God to say that this is not about feeling. Amen. Because you may not be able to feel the presence of God. Amen. Because that's also a privilege, but it doesn't mean that he is not present. Amen. Praise God. So, don't allow your physical senses to depict whether God is present. Amen. Amen. We have to remember that the word of God says, lo and behold, I am with you always, Always. even until the end of time. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So he is truly near us. And those of us that are saved and born of the spirit, we know that he is in us. Amen. Amen. We know that we didn't lose the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. And so the, and the Holy Ghost is his spirit. Amen. And so that was such a good share concerning strategy and things like that. So we thank God for that as well. Um, Minister Harris, are you sharing tonight? Praise God. Praise God. I I just love listening to the men and women of God because God is truly mighty. And he always shows up right on time, might not be there when we want him, but he's right on time. He knows what we're going through. And if you Amen. Just, you always love that prayer footprint in the sand. And then you thought that sometimes you moan and groan and say, well, Lord, where are you? And that's when he said, that's when I carried you. Amen. So we thank mm. God because he's always there and he's always right on time. And I do praise him because I think Apostle and I, we were saying, talking about the old mothers of the church. But honey, the need to get on when what when we said carry, we came from that Amen. Like, you carry. Amen. On God and Apostle shared with me how God told her to wait on it. Wait. Amen. Like when Amen. we used to get to the altar and those mothers would get in our ear and say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. You know, we would get down there and call on the name of Jesus and I do uh, praise him because that's the only thing, that's the only help and hope that I know. And there's power in the name and there's power in the prayer. And I just thank God for what he's doing. But again, I thank God for what he's going to do because I'm looking to the hills. Lord yes, God. God, and I do thank him for all the word and what you're saying tonight because he is just so real because he's real. 
in my soul. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Is, yeah, we are so happy about all that God is releasing through this um, teach on prayer. Amen. Prophetess Margaret Cavanaugh, are you sharing tonight? Amen. I just um, thank you, Apostle. I thank God for the word that was released tonight. And um, prayer, uh, it, it, it is very important in um I just I thank God because I think uh, back over my prayer life over the years, how he's intensified my relationship with him. And it is like the woman of God said, it's because I get in his presence. And it may not, I may not receive the answer immediately, but Amen. just being in his presence and him speaking to me and me attending my ear to hear him as he does for me, it means a lot. Um, and sometimes just speaking speaking the problem, a lot of times speaking the problem is not the solution, but if we take it in prayer, that is the solution, and just leaving it there. And so I, I've been really focusing my prayer time, um, being able to go before him, and whatever problems Amen. or struggles or issues I have that I'm facing that day, I'm able to lay those things at his feet and leave it there. And a lot of times it's men and women of God, we try to carry that weight, but we are in violation of the word of God because the word says cast all our cares on him. And so we can't cast our cares on him if we're not in a prayer time to do it. And so prayer is a, is, is very important in our lives. Um, I'm learning um, not to just live from earth to kingdom. I'm learning I'm learning to live kingdom to earth now. So Amen. Amen. what his word is saying, I'm I'm learning to to oh, attend to it and do it and Amen. and and stay in His presence. And the only way you can do that is you got to stay in His presence. So I really thank God for this teach tonight on prayer because um, it's just just reinforcing what He's been showing me in His Word. And so I I'm, I was grateful to be able to get off of work so I could be able to get in this in, in the in the on the Bible study tonight. So thank you, Apostle, for being obedient and releasing the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Right. You Praise alone. You God. Alone. She wasn't alone. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, we thank God for that share, and also we thank God for that revelation through the prophet. Amen. That we are in the earth, but we are not of this world. You know, mm-hmm. our home is in glory. Amen. Praise God. And so we have to learn how to live from where He is to the earth. Amen. Praise God. We're just passing through. We're not going to be here always. Amen? Amen. And so I just really thank God, you know, because sometimes we emphasize what's going on here more than we emphasize what he's doing up there, the place that he went to prepare a place for us. Amen? Amen. And we emphasize building up treasures here more than we emphasize building up treasures there, praise God. That's right. Because one thing I know, I can't take none of this treasure with me. Amen. 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 When I leave here, I'm leaving this whole suit and everything. The the, the flesh body, God to say, amen. The house ain't going. The piano ain't going. The bedroom set thing ain't none of the cars ain't None of this stuff is going. The only Amen. thing that is going with me is the souls, amen, that I witness Amen. Through, praise God. Yeah. Amen. So this is Amen. why I like to labor with the people of God, amen, because you are the treasure. Amen. You are Amen. the treasure. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. And so I, I truly just thank God for that. Amen. And, and we need to practice that. Amen. Hallelujah. Because we just passing through here. This ain't our home. Amen. Amen. We, Amen. we have already been spiritually resurrected with him where he is, praise God. We are already in the God realm, and we need to operate like that, praise God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We need to operate in that manner. Amen? And so I just truly thank God for the shares tonight. I'm going to release the line of Prophetess Margaret Cavanaugh, woman of God. I'm going to ask that you do the altar call. Amen? And um, she's going to instruct you on how to give if God is leading you to be a blessing unto the work of Jesus Christ at Cornerstone Deliverance Church. Praise God. You can give and 
and um, hallelujah, and then Sister Titiana, amen, will close us out in prayer. Praise God. Amen. 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 Um, um, at this time, we are. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna do the uh, offering. If there's Excuse anyone me, that prophetess, is loved, I'm gonna interrupt you for a minute. Yes, beloved, ma'am. the prophetess Margaret Cavanaugh. She is the leader of Kingdom Living Fellowship. That is the daughter work of CSDC. She. Um, she oversees 5 a.m. prayer um, for CSDC, and she does have a service Tuesday evening, praise God, which is a powerful service, amen? And prophetess, at the end of what you're doing, just share the number and the access code to your service, amen? Listen, that you can be further enriched through the word of God and in prayer in every service whether it's through Cornerstone Deliverance Church or a daughter work of CSCC, we want you to stay blessed. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And so we are coming together in unity. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And so, you know, that we can be richly blessed. And I love the revelation that God has given her. God gives her great revelation. She's a great prayer warrior. Amen. Praise God. She has, um, I, I, I have witnessed. Amen. Her walk in her transformation. Amen. The how she labors. Amen. Even for those that is up under Kingdom Living um, Ministry work, and it's an honor to have her here on Cornerstone Deliverance Church Services. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So, woman of God, we do honor you tonight. Amen. 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 Thank you, Apostle. Thank you. Um, I just want to um, open up with uh, this time of, of, of the offering. If there is anyone that is led to give, um, and it would be just an honor to just give to this ministry uh, of any, any substance that you decide to sow into the ministry, um, knowing that Apostle is interceding over it and that the Lord will bless you for that. And so... Uh, the ways that you can give to the ministry is you can go to Cash App at dollar sign CSDC12. That is the Cash App. Or you can go on the website at www.cornerstonedeliverancechurch.com and you're able to click the Donate button and so that way. Amen. So we just Amen. bless the Lord for anyone that is uh, cheerfully giving tonight. Uh, and there's no pressure, but how if the Lord is laying it on your heart, be obedient to the to this time and so into this um, this ministry, Amen. And so we will Amen. bless the, uh, the offering, Lord God. We ask that you will cont- you will bless everyone that is able to give tonight, Lord God. Even the ones that have desires to to give but don't have it, Lord God. We're asking that you will even open up their their open up the their wallets and purses, Lord God, that they will be able to give next time, Lord God. God, we ask that you will bless the ones that are giving tonight, Lord God. We ask that you will open the windows of heaven and the store gates of heaven and all of the floors of heaven and pour out your blessings upon your people for sowing into this ministry, Lord God. We thank you for Hallelujah. every seed that has been sowed into Cornerstone tonight, Lord God. We thank you that it will richly bless the kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you and give your name the praise and the honor and the glory for it. Now, for those that are not uh, saved, we we do open up this time for you to accept our Father. And this is a time that his grace outweighs your sin. And so mm, hallelujah. this is an important prayer that the most important prayer that you will ever pray and that is the prayer of salvation so tonight if you do not know our father we extend him to you it's a free gift Mm. 
And so all you Amen. have to do is accept him and come to him and ask him to forgive for whatever you've done. There's no little sin, no big sin, just asking him for forgiveness, and he will do that. And so let us go before the Lord tonight for our brothers and sisters that, are, that have accepted him. Lord Jesus, we thank you that they have confessed their sins to you and that you have forgiven them tonight, Lord God. And we thank you that you, will, that you have come into their heart, Lord God, and that they will no longer hurt themselves or you. And so we thank you, Lord God, that they will walk in holiness and righteousness from this day forth, God, that you will order every step, Lord, that you will fill them with your gift of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, and that they will, walk, they will, they will allow you to lead and guide them. We thank you right now for every soul, Lord God, that, is, that has accepted you tonight. We thank you for even the souls that once knew you but may have strayed away coming back to you, Lord God, that you've carried away their sins and you buried those sins, Lord God. We thank you right now, and you've given them eternal life tonight, the gift of eternal life by accepting you as their Lord and Savior. So we tell you thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, for your grace and your mercy, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Tatiana, you want to close us out in prayer? Yes. Um, Father God, hallelujah, Jesus. We just thank you and we praise you, Lord God. What a privilege it is to study your word, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we thank you for the sweet fellowship, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We I pray, Lord God, that we hide the word us in our hide the words in our heart, Lord God, that we may not sin against you. God, I pray for the speaker on tonight, our teacher, the apostle, Lord God. I pray that you Hallelujah. dispatch your ministering angels, Lord God, but you know what she stand in need of, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, touch her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, she just had surgery, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Replenish her, Lord God. Restore unto her that which which was given out, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I pray that you bind infection or dehensence, evis- evisceration, yes, Lord God, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I thank you for strengthening her, Lord God, in the name of Jesus and in keeping her. Jesus. Continue to use her for your glory. I pray that you minister to her all the night long, Lord God, and dispatch your angels round about her house, Lord God, where she dwells, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. By retaliation and backlash on every side, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Lord God, I Amen. thank you for touching every sister and brother on this line, God. God, I pray that we pray and obey, God. Hallelujah, Jesus, that we not be mere hearers of the word, but doers, God, in the name of Jesus. Let your word fall on good ground and bring forth much fruit in us, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus, for we are the light unto the world, so help us to carry the good yes, news God. for a lost and dying world. Hallelujah, Jesus, I pray that we be your true ambassadors, Lord God, sold out, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus, for you said in your word that it's the devil could deceive us. He would fool the very elect, Lord God. But help us not to be fooled, Lord God, by those that come with a little bit of word and a lie, Lord God. Help us to discern, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus, to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus, to stay in that secret place of the Most High that we may abide under your shadow, Lord God, as we pray for others, Lord God. For we are our brother's keeper. Help us to continue to pray. Can be consistent and steadfast in prayer. Jesus. Give us strategies in prayer, Lord God. Hallelujah, mm. Jesus. Teach us how to pray. Hallelujah, Amen. Jesus. And to have a true relationship with you, Lord God. To know you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. To know your character, Lord God. To know what you would have us to do, Lord God. As we study your scriptures, Lord God. Help us to pray your scriptures, Lord God. As we examine them line by line and precept by precept. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord God, for hearing this prayer, for answering this prayer, for yet another opportunity. We thank you for another day, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. So many little things we could take for granted, like our health, our strength, Lord God. The fact that we are free in this country to study your word and to pray. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we just thank you and we bless you because you're God and there is none like you in all the world. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Beloved, let us go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. I thank God for that powerful prayer. God be love. God be love. Everybody have a good week. God be love. God bless. Good night. Uh, Good week.